We have four cube magnets mounted on a Dremel, north on one side, south on the other. We're going to turn it at 5,000 RPM and see how it affects this magnet, which can freely spin or move upward. Turn it at 5,000 RPM. Move it a bit closer. See the magnet goes way up, doesn't it? And that magnet is over the center of the Dremel. It spins anti-clockwise. When it lies slightly outside the Dremel, it spins clockwise. With a vertical orientation, and this long horizontal field. We turn on the Dremel. You can see the test magnet spins very fast and rises up. Same as the direction spin. Turn over at 5,000 RPM. Move it a bit closer. You see the magnet goes way up, doesn't it? Now we're going to use a different magnet in the rotor, which is north on one side, blue on the other side, a horizontal spinning magnetic field. Turn on the Dremel. We see the magnet goes way up. At a 45 degree angle, it stays up even longer. Let's watch it run for a few minutes. Here we go now. This is with the cube magnet spinning above the test magnet. Put the Dremel near the top. We lift up the magnet and it finds a stable place for levitation just above, like that. If you take the magnet away, it will eventually drop down again. Now about here, you can see it's repelling. The magnet's repelling and spinning a little bit. And then it hits an attraction point there, and it becomes stable again. So repel and then attract. We can also see levitation with the Dremel at 45 degrees to the magnet. Put it over here, and it'll stabilize right there with the Dremel now at 45 degrees. If you take it down, it sort of stays stable.
Finally, let's try the Dremel at 90 degrees. Turn on the spinning magnet. Put it about there. And you can see at 90 degrees it's stable anywhere. Up, down. Pretty cool, isn't it? Lift up the magnet, take it down again. That's very, very cool. And here is spin by induction for an aluminium disc by this fast spinning cube magnet. Now let's try the aluminium disc and the magnet together. One more time. The magnet spins first and repels with the aluminium disc. Then at some point the magnet locks into equilibrium with the disc. There it goes. And we get a much more powerful spin from both of them together than we would for either one separately. We come in from 90 degrees, the aluminium disc no longer spins because there's no induction, but the permanent magnet will spin and rise up. Now we're going to use a different magnet in the rotor, which is north on one side, blue on the other side, a horizontal spinning magnetic field. Turn on the Dremel. You see the magnet goes way up.
if we construct a Dremel rotor with four cube magnets, red north pole on one end, blue south pole on the other, and we put it horizontally over another stack of magnets and we twist it, then what we do is we get a magnetic dipole coupling at low speed. We're twisting the magnet makes the stack of magnets move. That's at low speed like this. Nothing surprising there. If we do the same spin motion at high speed, 5,000 RPM, the magnets below twist about their vertical axis around the axis of spin rather than perpendicular to it. Further out away from the axis, they'll spin the other direction. Just to repeat, this is spinning the magnet parallel to Earth's gravity field. And you can see some sort of distortion through space takes, takes place. And the magnets spin around clockwise on the inside. If you take it out here, they'll spin anti-clockwise. And then switch back to clockwise when you go inside again. This is parallel to the downward force of gravity. This is spin repulsion for 20 millimeter magnets over the, over the center, see it spins clockwise. And then we take it outside somewhere, it'll spin the other way. With the blue south pole pointing up, over the center of the magnet, it spins clockwise. And they're around the outside of the magnet, spinning magnet spins the other way. Anti-clockwise, all the way around the outside, look at that. Pretty cool, isn't it? Over the center of the magnet, it spins clockwise again. And then outside, it spins anti-clockwise.